All right, so you decided you're gonna install a 70 volt audio system. Now, the next question is, what are the things that you need to consider in order to design a system properly? Well, hey everyone, Nick here with Snap AV. In this how-to video, we're gonna walk through the various options of speakers and tap settings, different wiring considerations, all to determine the size of amp you're gonna need. Let's go ahead and get started. For our first example, we're gonna use a very classic 70 volt wire setup, where we have a single amplifier with stereo input feeding a whole bunch of speakers in line all with flying leads. And in this example, we're saying that all the tap settings are at two watts each. So we're gonna say the size of this job is gonna require 50 speakers. Now the important thing to remember for 70 volt wiring is that it's all done in parallel, meaning all positive goes to positive, all negatives go to negatives. So we'll start from the amplifier to the first speaker, positive to positive, negative to negative. And then from there, we'll go positive to positive, to negative to negative to each speaker down the line so on and so forth. Now, to calculate our total wattage that we're gonna need, we simply add up all the tap settings of all the speakers. Since we said we're gonna have 50 speakers here, we simply take 50 times two because they're all even. All of them are two watts each. This is 100 watts. Now, we can't stop there because we have to also calculate in for line loss. And that's typically gonna be about 10 to 20% based on the size of the job and the amount of wiring you're gonna need. So let's just go ahead and calculate on the larger side to be safe. So 100 watts at 20% line loss, we need at least 120 watt amplifier. And quickly stopping here, you can really see the benefit to 70 volt wiring, very simple wiring and easy calculations using a single amplifier to get a whole bunch of speakers to cover a large area. In our next example, we're gonna to talk to a little bit more complex 70 volt wiring setup. So for our amplifier, again, we'll use a single amp with stereo input, and we're gonna introduce volume controls with multiple zones. So we'll have a volume control here with speaker, speaker, speaker for zone one, volume control speakers for zone two, and volume control speakers for zone three. Now to wire it, again, we're gonna go in parallel, so from the amp to the first volume control, positive, positive, negative to negative, and then we'll go from volume control to speaker, and speaker to speaker. And in this example, we're using speakers with screw down terminals, so it makes the wiring much easier. Now, what we need to do, to do next is determine the power handling for the volume control with all these speakers connected to it. So we simply add the tap setting here, here, and here. 15 plus 7.5 plus 7.5 is 30 watt. So we know we need a volume control with at least 30 watts plus our line loss. So we'll say a 50 watt volume control. And we'll do the same thing for volume control in zone two and for zone three. So zone two, we had three watts there, so we'll do a 25 watt volume control here. And zone three, we have 60 watt, so we'll do 100 watt volume control for zone three. Now that we determine the size of the volume controls for zone one, two, and three, we need to still wire up zone two and three to the amplifier. This can be done in one of two ways. Again, running in parallel, you can run zone two volume control and double up positive to positive and negative to negative on the amplifier. This is great if the volume control is close. If, however, your volume control in zone three is far away from the amplifier, but close to the volume control in zone two, you can simply go positive to positive, negative to negative on the input side of this volume control because you're gonna draw the power from the amplifier. Now, it's important to note you wanna definitely go to the input because if you go to the output side, you're gonna attenuate the volume control in zone three from the volume control in zone two. With all of our zones running back to our amplifier, how big of an amp do we need? Well, you can calculate it one of two ways. You can either add up all the wattage of all your volume controls, and in this case, 175. So you approximately need a 200 watt amplifier or greater for the volume control setup, or in the case of adding up all the speaker wattage, we have 33 plus 60 is 93, so approximately 110 watt amplifier for your speakers. Well, that's a really big difference, 200 versus 110. Well, it depends on if you need scalability. As we can see, we have 30 watts of speakers for this volume control, so there's 20 watts there. We have 22 watts available for zone two and 40 watts for zone three. If you plan on account for scalability, you're gonna to wanna to go with a 200 watt amplifier or greater. If, however, 
you simply design a fixed system and you're not going to add any more speakers, then you can simply go with a smaller amplifier. Now that we understand the basic wiring and calculations for a 70 volt system, you may be wondering what tap settings do you use? Well, while that depends on the installation, the really important thing to understand is every time you double your tap setting, you're only increasing your volume level by 3 dB. While it's a noticeable change, it may not sound twice as loud. So if you're on a listening level of 60 dB and you go from a 2 to 4 watt tap setting, it's going to go up to 63. Same holds true for 30 to 60, but as you, as you increase the number of speakers that you have, you're going to greatly increase the total amplification that's required. Well, we hope this video has been helpful and that you feel a little bit more comfortable for your next 70 volt installation. However, if you do have any questions, please feel free to call our tech support team. We thank you very much for buying with SnapAV, and as always, happy installing.